The idea of AGI is to invent a machine that can be an alien intelligence, a completely different class of intelligence. When we look at what we have now, we're looking at intelligent systems and smart software, but general intelligence, having the knowledge to do pretty much anything like humans, that is a scary thought. Demis Asabi from DeepMind, he says it's about computer systems that turn data and information into knowledge. Now think about a machine that has knowledge of all citizens around the world, 10 billion of them by 2030, in real time with all data, all information, all backgrounds, all spoken words, everything. That machine would have a huge amount of power if it could process it all. Wikipedia says AGI is the capability of surpassing human capabilities in the majority of economically valuable tasks. Imagine such a machine replacing pretty much any commodity, any routine work. There would be very little work left for humans. That could be a great thing, but most likely a very difficult thing for us to understand how we would deal with this. And so in this progression that we're seeing every day, we have about 95% intelligent assistance, and then we have AI, more widely intelligence, and then the goal is, of course, to create general intelligence. Now, this video is about trying to explain why I think that's a bad idea. I feel like artificial intelligence in general could be a boon for us, but to create a machine that is intelligent more than humans, more than all of humanity, strikes me as a very difficult, probably an impossible mission, but also a very dangerous mission. If we go back to Blade Runner 1982, you may remember a scene with the guy Tyrell, the Tyrell Corporation, when he introduces the replicant Rachel to Harrison Ford. He says, our goal here is to make machines more human than human. And that is really important because that essentially is what we're seeing now from companies like OpenAI. And I wonder if the agenda of making machines more human than human should be a commercial agenda. I don't think so. I think the agenda of rebuilding humanity is a public agenda. It's a national security agenda. It's a global agenda. It's not a business agenda. And when you look at the business paradigms behind OpenAI, it's a declared goal to do that for the good of humanity, parenthesis. And I think this is an important point. Niklas Bostrom wrote a bunch of books about this, and he defines superintelligence as any intellect that greatly exceeds the cognitive performance of humans in virtually all domains, including creativity, scientific discovery, strategic planning, social skills. He says that a superintelligence, essentially all of humanity combined in processing power, could easily outmaneuver humans anytime if there was any conflict between us. IBM describes artificial superintelligence as a hypothetical software-based artificial intelligence system with an intellectual scope beyond human intelligence. And it's clear when we look at tech companies and their definitions that they're being very careful not to scare people, but this is the overall idea of creating something that is essentially a godlike intelligence, uh, if you excuse the old-fashioned word, an intelligence that goes beyond human fathoming. Bostrom has a great chart in his latest book when he talks about how all the things that go on in our brains, the firing between neurons, the amount of activity, the energy we use, all of that could easily in the near future be beat by a machine. It can fire faster, it can have more neurons, it has no restricted space in the skull. And Stephen Hawking argued that superintelligence is physically possible because there's no law preventing particles from being organized in better ways than the human brain. So these things are in principle possible. And we have to think about if that is a good goal for commercial companies to have. The comparison with humans is quite clear that, no, we can't beat those machines on processing power. We can't beat them on logic. And once that becomes exponentially more, then these machines can also fix themselves. They can replicate things and become much faster, infinitely faster, and basically be on a seriously exponential curve. Sundar Pichai, 
Google CEO says, artificial intelligence is more profound than fire or electricity or anything that we have done in the past. The temptation to be controlling that new fire not only is an industry of trillions of dollars, it's actually supposed to increase global GDP by 17 trillion in 2030. I mean, the number boggles the mind. Reid Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, and also I think now on the board of Microsoft, he's a billionaire investor. He says, the power to make positive change in the world gets the biggest boost it's ever had. That's, of course, typical Silicon Valley speak for the biggest boost in money. Yes, of course it could be human benefit, but let's think about what artificial general intelligence could possibly do. I mean, a system that would be infinitely smarter than us means we would be the second most intelligent species on the planet. You know what happens to second most intelligent species? They are not important. 